Welcome to Florida Men on Florida Man with Greg, Wayne, Josh, and Cameron. The podcast where Floridians discuss the legends, lore, and crazy stories crazy. that crazy. always seem to take place in Florida. 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 We're back again. Guys, who do you think could hold a note longer? Cameron. Oh, come Cameron. on. Come Cameron. Cameron could do it before COVID, and now that he's been singing Afflicted. with mask on every oh, day. Yeah. Yeah. That's rough, His honestly. His lungs are just tough. Yeah. Like how long? Like like jerky. Whoa. Jerky tough. Jerky tough. Yeah, those lungs. If, if you had to put a second, like how many seconds could you hold a note for? Oh. Do you have any idea? Yeah, 211. 211 what? seconds? Yeah. Roughly. That's like three and a half minutes. I know. Every time we come in the studio, Cameron greets us with Ave Maria. <laughs> it's so But beautiful. it's him singing it. <laughs> Guys, I just want to say, um, before taping this episode, Josh and I went to a barbecue place in town. Oh, here we go. It was a big mistake. But Josh... I, I tried I, to go to the Thai place where I, I'm more comfortable. Okay, mm-hmm. but I got to see him in the wild flirting with people. <laughs> His, it's not that he's flirting. It's just that he's so charismatic that every yeah. day conversation comes off as flirting. The gender yeah. or the sex of the person doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. Doesn't no. matter. She comes up to us, beautiful gown. She says, um, <laughs> what, do you, what do you want to order? Josh says something barbecue flavored. Well, I uh, yes. At Sunny's barbecue. Yeah. I, that and was she, a requirement for me. Yeah. And she said, everything here is barbecue flavored except for me. And without missing a beat, Josh says, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting it there. It sounds worse hearing it now. Yeah. I just left church. I got my head down because I'm like, yeah. I don't know how to That's respond to flirtatious. that. That's pretty flirtatious. Is it though? Yeah. I think so. I was I was saying that she'll probably spill barbecue sauce on her. Throughout the day, I don't think it came off that no, way. No, no, no. I think no. she's still probably thinking about you, you. You stand in front of that smoker long enough. I mean, barbecue. You're boy, gonna right. be barbecue. Meat Come on, girl. baby. Yeah. I want to barbecue some headlines. Ooh, Let's, do Let's do it. Let's do it. Nice. Okay, headline. Oh, here headlines. we go. Snore fest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So our first headline. Okay. Uh, it's somebody that we should remember. One of the most floor, uh, the most famous Florida men uh, we've ever talked about. Kind Jamaican of, Steve. Kind Jim of Bush. game. Uh, kind of gave Florida men like a mascot. Right. Jamaican Steve. Lane Pittman. Oh, Hurricane guy. So Lane Pittman was the guy in the photos from Hurricane Matthew. Yeah. And I Hurricane think, Lane Pittman, we call him. And right? Hurricane Florence, I think. Um, but he was the one that was standing in the mil- middle of the hurricane in the middle of the street with the American flag. Right. And long hair. Yeah. No shirt on. And so like he was like... Listening the, to Florence and the Machine? Yes. Yes. And so he was like a classic like icon for Florida men. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, anyways, Lane Pittman um, recently went... What? To Hurricane Laura Come on. and to do his headbang to uh, oh. Slayer's Raining Blood. He's shirtless. He's got his flag. Because he slices it in half, right? Isn't that the thing? If you headbang under a hurricane yes. listening to Slayer's... Yeah. you defeat it. Blood rains. Right. Uh, the hurricane splits in half. Right. So he basically went to Louisiana. Uh, and this is a quote. Louisiana. He said, he said, Louisiana, Florida man is here for you. Laura... You raggedy she devil, get <laughs> get some, and so Come and then he on. starts head banging. So, anyways, um, I didn't expect him to uh, do the Florida anthem, L- Laura. You she devil, you get she some. devil. Yeah. So, anyways, he's uh, you know out uh, helping Louisiana throughout this you know this terrible time with this hurricane. Yeah, he did sure. set up a go- uh, a GoFundMe for victims of Hurricane Laura. So, but we wanted to shout out Lane Pittman. He's always. Um, Fighting the hurricanes. Thank He's you. always standing strong for us. Um, and uh, I found, while I was looking into this story, I found another one about Lane Pittman. What? The Uh-oh. same guy? The same guy from 2015. <laughs> See, Cam's got to bring him up, and now he's going to bring him down. I'm not going to bring him down. Okay. Uh, this Jacksonville man, what? Lane Pittman, yeah. shredded the national anthem so hard that the cops were forced to arrest him. What? what? So on the 4th of July in uh, 2015, yeah. Lane Pittman was like, he had a guitar and an amp standing on like uh, a corner of the oh, street. Okay. 
and playing guitar and singing and and all this like oh. draw, he was drawing a crowd just I, from him going out there. I thought he had printed it out and like was putting it in a shredder, and I was like, "That's tr- that's <laughs> and niche, the police niche. came." Yeah. So people started gathering, and about two hundred people what? ended up out of nowhere start gathering towards a spot, and he starts doing a national anthem, and the cops were there because it it started getting rowdy, like it Whoa. started to get. They're patriots. Pretty, it's America. Well, that's yeah. the funny thing was you have to salute. The, right. the police just stopped and stood there and watched him and let him play the entire national anthem. Because no. before he started national anthem, they said, okay, you know, it's getting a little out of hand. Yeah. Um, let's go ahead and move on. Right. And he moved off the streets, but it, it not it far followed. enough. And yeah. Um, so anyways, they said, yeah, we didn't want to mess with him while he was playing national anthem. You can't. Right. I think it's a technicality. You can't. Yeah. And so they ended up um, waiting until he was done and arrested him for breach of peace which is a misdemeanor. Yeah. They ended up throwing that out, um, nice. but I think they just needed to get everybody off of the street. But yeah, that's Lane Pittman. I mean, he's just, that guy's, he goes hard. Yeah, he goes what hard. A hero, well, dude. I think it's a national anthem thing because you've heard those people like botch it at like a baseball oh, yeah. game. Jimmy like, Hendrix. Like Fergie. Yeah, right. She'll start it, but nobody stops her and says, hey, you're off you key. Can, I think Josh is on to something. Yeah. If someone is performing the national anthem, yep. it's illegal to stop them. It's yeah. illegal to stop them. No that's matter right. how bad. You just And then you can lock it. them up for a beach. Beach of Peace. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Beach of Peace. <laughs> uh, so our next headline is okay. a Florida man who got lucky. Okay, he uh, he got his hands on a winning lottery ticket. What? Oh, right. cool. Winning how, lottery. How ticket. many millions? Uh, Thirty dollars to be exact. That's Whoa. what I'm talking about. And so he goes Rich to the boy. store to cash this yeah. winning lottery ticket for thirty dollars, okay. uh, and gets arrested. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> too high. 25 or under. Because earlier that day, he went to that same convenience store, stole 13 lottery tickets from this store, went home, scratched them off, found that he had a winner, went back to the same exact place to try to cash it. It doesn't, because it's a winner no matter what. They're like, listen, we knew... We, we know that you stole these. Yeah, so he stole 13. But he said, I want to pay... For oh, the thir- okay. yeah, with the thirty, he's like, if right. you'll just cash this for me, I'll- I can play. I can pay for the <laughs> yeah. ones I stole. Yeah. But anyways, yeah, he got arrested. Oh. I don't know why. Why wouldn't you just go somewhere different? But here's the thing, dude. That's a terrible. It's commercial. a convenient store for a reason. It's convenient to him. No, I was gonna say it's a terrible commercial for the Florida Lottery. He yeah. got he got thirteen tickets. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Probably yeah. five bucks a piece if oh, he had paid for them. That's, yeah. And he only won thirty bucks. Yeah. That's that's I think that yeah. should I mean, be it a lesson. Been one dollar though. Uh, now then you he, don't then he's steal $27 up. Ones. That's true. $17. I can't math. He can't, I can't math. math. All right. So is he in prison? Uh, I don't know if he still is, but yeah, he got arrested for petite burglary. <laughs> oh, I, I love, love that one. one. Petite. I hate, I hate this chair. Did I ever tell you that? Uh, the one yes. you're sitting in? Yeah. yeah. It has lumbar support. But it looks not comfortable, like, though. It's not at all. It looks really cute. <laughs> <laughs> Our next uh, Florida man story uh, is about a Florida woman. Okay. And this, honestly, this story is just so good. I'm going to read this story. I usually just kind of summarize them. I just want to read it. Uh, So this was published, though, in uh, February of 2011. So this is nine years ago. Okay. Wow. That was a long time. I don't remember where I was nine years ago. You were elementary school. Yeah, Yeah. I think so. Pre-pubescent. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. I was kindergarten. Uh, So anyways, Hersha Howard of Naples, Florida, got home Sunday morning and went to the kitchen to eat from her stash of Thin Mints. That's what I'm talking but about. But she found Amen. that her delicious cookies were all gone. Did all gone was in, in caps. Did she put them in the freezer? Because that's where you want to keep those. Let's Am find, I right, live streamers? Let's find out. You know I'm right. And she flipped out. She went into her roommate's room, woke her up, and accused her of eating the cookies. That was a beatdown. That oh, yeah. was Because you don't wake someone up over a Thin Mint topic right. without punches to the ears. Exactly. Yeah. And it wasn't just like a Thin Mint. It was a stash of Thin no. Mints. So the roommate insisted she did not eat them, but Hersha didn't believe her. They argued and it escalated to the point of Hersha chasing her roommate around with I'll scissors, do. then hitting her with a wooden board, following her outside and attacking her with a sign. That's three separate weapons. Jesus. You got scissors. I don't know who has a wooden board laying around their house. And then a sign. Cutting board. Uh, Hersha was eventually arrested and charged For with what? aggravated battery with a deadly weapon and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. What's the crime? The cookies. Oh, okay. So, as for what happened to the missing cookies, it turns out that earlier that day, the roommate had opened the Thin Mints. Oh. Told you. But she didn't eat them. What? She gave them to Hersha's kids because they were hungry. <gasps> oh, my gosh. 
Uh, Hersha, okay. Make sure your kids are fed. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, don't 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 give them thin mints. Give them like ravioli or something. Right. Garbage yeah, chef but yeah. We already, yeah, yeah. But thin mints are in the freezer for you, where your kids can't reach it. If your roommate is doing something nice enough, like feeding your children, feeding don't beat them kids. with a board. Yeah. Wait, so her children were charged with theft? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's they got crazy. arrested. Accomplices. Yeah, yeah exactly. <sighs> that story made this me sad. A, this is a, yeah. This was a whirlwind. I got oh, another one. Thank you. I, I hope it's about. a happy one. Let me try a new seating position. Do y'all mind? No, uh, go, go for it. Okay. Let's all just wait for a second. This is gonna last about two minutes. There we go. So, Sorry. Uh, a Florida uh, gas station has a bizarre request. Okay. Okay. For their microwaves. Oh. So okay. a Jacksonville <laughs> gas station owner is asking people not to warm their urine in the microwave. Uh, That's reasonable. Don't yeah. heat up your pee in the microwave. That's reasonable. Okay. Yeah. So the owner is saying they get sick and tired of people bringing their urine, urine containers. Wait, yes. what? Into the gas station and then <sighs> using their microwaves, which are let like me, for like hot dogs and hamburgers. Let me just help him out here. Okay. Uh, actually, make the rule more specific. Uh, tell your customers, put in a fork or a chopstick. Okay. Because what you want is what's called a nucleation point. <laughs> um, what's happening is the vessel is smooth, so it can't create bubbles. So it will be extremely hot. So what's happening uh, okay. is it's getting to boiling point. Okay. They're reaching in, touching it. Ah, Hot pee. Yeah, hot, yeah, hot pee, pee, hot pee, hot pee. But if you put a chopstick in there, uh, it'll create a nucleation point where you can see the bubbles. Okay. So and that, then you know it's boiling. Then pee-pee. you know it's boiling. I don't think that burning urine hands were the <laughs> was the problem. <laughs> I think you're missing the point. Are you sure? I think the fact that they were heating, part of the problem just heating up urine. Uh, he said in their that microwave. all his customers ran out and going my pee my hands. <laughs> So uh, he was saying that they have multiple people a week walk in off the street, microwave urine containers, and then just leave. They don't even buy Those anything. are smooth bottom vessels. Oh. You need a chopstick in there. So the gas station is in within walking distance of a uh, diagnos- uh, diagnostic center and lab. Yep. Uh, and so people will come in for drug testing services. To you know, to give their urine sample in there, they'll have somebody else's urine sample, warm it up, and take it into the to the that, lab. Honest to God, it's one of the grossest stories. It's pretty bad. That's and then so somebody's gonna go bad. right. You in gotta there. strap it to your leg. Uh, Here we go, because you gotta keep it body warm. Because okay. that's one of the things that they don't want things. it boiling. They're like, ma'am, you yeah. have boiling urine. <laughs> There's an issue. In the span of one headline, Josh has taught us science and also how to cheat on a drug test. <laughs> you want to, yeah, you want to get it tight uh, up to that leg. Honestly, that says more about where's the heat zone. When you mystique. look at my body, where do you see heat emanating Just from? All everywhere, <laughs> everywhere, <laughs> too many places. <laughs> Hey, Josh. Josh, how are you? I think I just watched out of the, my periphery. No, you didn't. Wayne, smell his sweater for meat. Smell. Yes, he's been doing that the Earlier whole episode. in the so episode, far. Cameron accused then he us salivates of, of smelling like minutes. meat. Yes. And I have to go back to church after this, and I don't want to smell like food. <gasps> I got a letter. Okay. Let's do uh, it. And uh, this nice lady said, guys, you told a story about reoccurring dreams. We did recently. Which yes. I did. She said, I oh, don't yeah. have reoccurring dreams, but I have weird dreams. Okay. Um, How can we do, help you? Do y'all have weird dreams? I think oh, every, all the time. If you dream, then you're going to... All dreams are weird, I feel I like. I think all, sure. all dreams are weird. Yeah. If you've That's got, wisdom. That yeah. is... Yeah. That is, all dreams are weird if by you're Cameron not dreaming, Hayes. If you're not dreaming weird, you're not dreaming. Come on, baby. Amen. Give Amen. us another one. Give us another dream quote. <laughs> That's like three dream quotes. <laughs> I know. If your dreams are simple, your life is simple. Whoa. Oh, my gosh. This guy. Wow. Okay. Pastor well, Cameron. I don't have a weird dream. Um, I guess it is weird because it's reoccurring. Okay. Um, but like the last one, it, it just went along with the whole... Um, me sucking yeah, thing. Yeah. Like you not being good at stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or You're it was not really like, good at much. Where it was like I was a cowboy, and then my cowboy friend got bit. 
yeah by a oh, rattlesnake yeah by a rattlesnake and i go well how can i help and he's like you suck yeah right and then my the poison dream, out my dream was yeah. over yeah uh so this one i was on a softball team all girls softball team okay <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> My name was Francesca. No, okay. That's fine. I, I saw. I knew it because when I put on my jersey, I saw Francesca on the yeah, back. Right. So I don't know. If Last that was name? My, I don't know. Last name Francesca. Yeah. It could have been one of those teams where it's like put your first name on the back. Okay. It could be. Or Fran, it could have Francine been Francine Francesca. Francine Francesca. Yeah. yeah. So I um, uh, apparently I was in a private school where the uh, varsity team were called the Rams. Okay. And the uh, the other team were not called the Rams. So we At get the out, same school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we get out there and um, we're playing like the um, the the Dinos or something like that. Yeah. Some other team, the Raptors or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Dinos the, is a classic high the, school name. <laughs> the, I've heard before. <laughs> the Dinos. <laughs> Here is roar. <laughs> <laughs> and so I look up in the stage. I look up at the at the, at the uh, all the visitors. Yeah, because there's like 15 of them. Right, and it spells like E W E. Oh yeah, suck. And I put it together, <laughs> and the you. Rams were varsity, and the, we were the junior the varsity. We oh. were the use. We were the female sheep. The female and I, and sheep. I read it, and I was Classic. like, "You suck." And then, boom! I, the dream was over. So you just you woke up. Are constantly stuck in I'm this bombarded dream cycle. By this, yeah, of just suck. negative reinforcement. It's yeah. weird, though, right? I think yeah. maybe I carry too much arrogance around, you know, with the so barbecue your dreams waitress. are a humbling mechanism. I well, think so. You know what I've always said? What? Your dreams suck. You suck. <laughs> he does say <laughs> he that does often. Say that. You know, I had a weird dream um, not too long ago. I uh, was in a uh, shopping store. Shopping okay. for food. Yeah. Okay. Uh, also a, known as a grocery store. A grocery store. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And store. I was a food looking, center. And mm, I didn't have a list delicious. of like stuff to buy. And I think my anxiety. Have was, you was, ever like, gone to a shopping store with a list? Oh yeah. My wife per- makes it for me. That's she. Okay. Yeah. And I was like stressed out. I can't find anything. But in this dream, my mom was there. Not oh. not my wife. Yeah. And all the items on the shelf were like pulsating. Okay. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's not normal. With no. The, with the sound? Yeah. Okay. And then like I kept reaching for them and I couldn't quite reach the items. Well, because if they're pulsating, then you don't they're know They're kind of moving. Grasp. Yeah. And I look over at my mom and I said, hey, like I've got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And well, so Bryce she's like, is about to attack. <laughs> yeah. So I go back to the van. I'm in the van. People are screaming everywhere. It's stressful. Yeah. And my mom comes out and I think she's about to tell me something. And then she she screams at me, what? and then I woke up and I threw up all over myself. What? This, what? Which part is the dream? That well, the part that's the dream was before me vomiting. Oh, so, so you woke up in real groceries. life? Yeah, and I had a fever. So I think I was sick, oh, okay. and that like the dream was a response to a what fever my dream. Body, that's yeah, gross. Literal fever dream. But that, yeah. but she asked for weird dreams, and that was a weird dream. Yeah, it is. So pulsating. It sounds like it was that World War Z movie. Yeah, if I recall, Brad Pitt also went in. And he was running around, and the, the groceries grocery store. Were like, I don't think so. You don't know. Maybe it's a different. Karen, a different do you have movie. a weird dream? I do. Yeah. Uh, so this happened two nights ago. Okay. What? This, this happened is, two this nights ago. This is recent. This, what this I is love. super recent. Okay. Um, and so I woke up, and yeah. I can't believe I remembered this because I, I, you woke really up. never remember my dreams. This isn't uh, the. This isn't a good start to a dream when he's like, I woke up. You're right. I'm not. I'll just talk about the dream specifically. Thank you. So in my dream, yeah, uh, my wife had gone to Publix specifically. So this is grocery store. Current again. wife? Yes. The That's current what I'm one. talking. That's yeah. how you know you're in love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she was coming back from Publix. Okay. And uh, she brought in the groceries. Okay. Uh, and then handed me a bag of or just a bag, and I look in it, <laughs> and it was full of doorknobs and uh. locks. Like she's, just door not loose doorknobs. She's very thievery. But they they weren't like new. They weren't in packaging at all. Okay. And so I said, well, babe, what? Why are you handing me doorknobs? Amen. And she said, well, uh, I'm, I ran into this guy outside of Publix, <laughs> and he said, and he was talking about, you know, um, how often do you change out your locks, and how often do you change what? your doorknobs? People, Why would I? People can make a copy of your key at any time. Uh, and so you don't know how many people have the key to your house. And she's like, well, that's true. And so uh, anyways, he's people like, people don't just walk up the houses and, and scan the I, doorknob. I know, but any, I don't know. This was my that's dream. A dream. It's a dream. Okay. Uh, so, uh, she's like, it, the guy's like, well, if you sign up for my mailing list, uh, I'll give you free knobs and locks. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and so, anyways, I'm like, if anybody sounds flirty, this guy. Oh sounds yeah, for sure, oh, for sure, free uh, knobs. I'm like, you didn't sign up for this, right? And right. she's like, well, I mean, it made sense. Like, we yeah. can have free uh, door handles. And so, <laughs> who doesn't I said, want okay, that? But please tell me you didn't give them our like information or our address. It's she's a like, mailing list. She's like, of course I did. I'm like. <laughs> So you, we have new door handles, and some random guy outside Publix has our address. Hold on, these and are then, new in a bag, not sealed. No, 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 they're used. <laughs> they're just loose used doorknobs, doorknobs. In, in a Publix bag. Okay. And so as this is happening, uh, the door opens, <gasps> and I look over, and it's yes. some like redhead lady for, uh, in a Publix outfit, <laughs> bro. And this gets so uh, deep. and she's like. I'm like, Whoa, uh, hello, what are you doing here? She's like, uh, I'm just here to look around. What? Like, wow. What does that mean? I'm like, get out of my house. I get it. I and get so it. I Jesus. ended up having to run her out, you know. I like you do. Knives, I'm open carry. Knives yeah. and guns. I had yeah. a grenade in one hand. and yeah. <laughs> what did we, that's the dream? That's the dream. What did we experience when we went to record, right? What did we have to move? Weapons. Oh, um, yeah. A box oh. of knives. I, oh. I, My dream caused me to get sick to my stomach, but your dream sounds just like really disturbing. This is, uh, it was pretty messed this up. This was a night that you had no illness or anything no this is a Actually, standard i night. went to bed really early that night melatonin no. zz cool just tired sleepy just why sleepy. are you in doctor mode what are you gonna ask <laughs> i didn't know what it was <laughs> i mean you told me vitamin to tell you c dream. just happened was it an excess vitamin c it could have uh, been might have been yeah okay eat a lot of oranges guys what i have in front of me what do you have on that piece of paper it was not my dream i i faked it when i acted like i was reading my dream off of this yeah your dream that, was short i didn't know why you needed to re- that's write it down this is actually a um uh, my dream interpretation oh, notes no. i've been taking them out of the wall street journal please no every week <laughs> no and uh I, I, there's some keywords that you guys said oh yeah i'm, I'm sure. just going to i'm just going to you're uh, going to interpret our dreams. I'm going to interpret us. the dreams. Who yeah. goes first? Who are you interpreting first? Let me see. Uh, let me see. What keyword you use? Pulsating. Wayne. Um, <laughs> wife. Vomit. Wayne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what you picked grocery out? Grocery store. Yeah. Shopping. Mum. Okay. Yes. Okay. The fact that you used mum instead of mom. Okay. Uh, actually means that um, the butter you bought last time you went oh, was no. actually margarine. No. Gross. Yeah. And you're going to have to. That's disgusting. Wait, the Wall Street Journal wrote that? It says. Yeah, that's really m- weird. Mom slash mom. Uh, if mom replaces mom. Margarine eaters. You bought margarine instead of butter. Ah. If mom replaces mom. Dude, that's yeah. deep, bro. Yeah, that is deep. Yeah. Okay. And I thought also, you liked butter. No, no. He just. He I'm margarine. lactose intolerant. I can't That's have it. Yeah. He looks like a margarine. Uh, if the dream ends with vomit or no vomit, <gasps> uh, vomit, no vomit means you don't believe the Byzantine Empire was real. <laughs> so basically, everybody on the planet, for the most part, <laughs> if they wake up from a dream, they well, don't believe in the Byzantine if, Empire. <laughs> what the crap is that? If, 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 if there was pulsating in the dream. Yeah, that's why it says pulsating, and it's like a. <laughs> I can't draw it out here. Yeah, it's I don't believe the Wall Street Journal wrote this. Uh, if there was vomit and pulsating, okay, uh, it means it just says deep fried okra. And I don't know <laughs> why. I don't know why that is anything. Um, it also says I don't believe you. Uh, uh, if you had a list, okay, of groceries, right. or if you were just walking through, okay, and you said you had a list. I did, did have a list. Okay, so you this is this isn't from me. Your wife gave you a list. Your wife gave you a list. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, what you told uh, us. Bad news: your dog is sterile. And no, yeah, he'll never find true love. Matheson. Yeah, Matheson is sterile. Also, <sighs> makes sense, honestly. Okay, no, yeah. Now we're on to him. Uh oh. Um, okay, Cameron's his name. Cameron is his name. For everybody that can't okay. see. Uh, what were some keywords? I don't, I don't want to remember. Keywords were grocery trip, right? Yeah. Uh, also in mine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 And then, uh, he, he named a retailer. Publix. Uh, uh, that if, if you name a specific store, it says, um, you will get either a Furby okay. or a tickle me no mo tour <laughs> toy for Christmas this year. Okay. Wait, just, his dream interpretation is a spoiler for a Christmas gift? I get, I get gifts. I'm sorry. He said that he named Publix. I don't believe an entire civilization toy, exists. And he gets a present? 
<laughs> well, Tickle Me No Mo. I, I don't, don't know if that's a name I'm not brand. I'm familiar with that one. It's that's like Tickle a, Me Elmo, but, but it's Tickle Me He doesn't me want no. to be tickled. He's <laughs> like, no, no, don't tickle me. It's a pretty, it, it's the blue guy. Yeah, I think. no, I, yeah, I know okay. what you mean. The also, um, wait, there's the, more. Yeah, the doorknob actually, uh, uh, uh oh. Well, her her falling for the guy. Yes, that means that you have diabetes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird. Uh, doorknobs, loose doorknobs, actually represent your toe, your big toe falling off oh, no. because of the diabetes. Oh, no. Um, your your wife falling for the guy uh, means that she may or may not cheat on you with someone. <laughs> From Quest Diagnostics or Lab Core. Wait, hold on. Uh, that's, that's oh no. That's just if what the Wall Street Journal if your says. Your spouse gets tricked in a dream. You have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh jeez. It says and or sleep apnea. I've been, no, I've been feeling weird lately. I told you, bro. I didn't know why. Uh, oh. Loose a bag of loose doorknobs represents your big toes falling off. <sighs> Which that makes sense. Yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. <laughs> when I go in, <laughs> just <laughs> uh, and your wife falling for a suited man, yeah, uh, means that she will or will not cheat on you uh, with someone from Quest Diagnostics I don't know who or trust uh, Lab Core. Well, here's the thing: it doesn't seem fair that you're interpreting our dreams and not your own. Oh so, no, I I pulled out some of mine. I was about to say, I'm sure the Wall Street Journal yeah, had something great to say it. about um, about your dream. It talked about uh. Uh, hoofed creatures. Okay. Yeah. Uh, sheep, sheep. You. Right. Uh, just, like, just like your dream. And it says that my VR workouts will start paying off. Oh, which, okay. Which wow. is encouraging. It's about time. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I'm about to start. <laughs> okay. So that's good. Yeah. I, ha- I dropped the ball for a while. Well, just, yeah. I want to fill in our listeners. Josh invested some money on a virtual reality kit. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, t- <laughs> he told us it was for fitness. <laughs> And I stopped using it. Uh, it's I got not for fitness. It's how you say I got bored of it. Right. Yeah. But then I learned I could sculpt in it. Yeah. Oh, which cool. is cool. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. So your fitness is going to pay off. Yeah. My VR pay. workouts will start to pay off. So Cameron's got diabetes. You're yeah. about to uh, get fit. Yep. Okay. That's all it said. That's, That's it? great, dude. Well, I feel it said good. hooved creatures equal my VR workouts uh, under the username A Hunt for Bread October. Look me up. <laughs> Uh, we'll play paintball together. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's go. Tyson Stowe was born February 14th, 1985 in Orlando, Florida. 1985. Yep. That means that Josh was alive. Wow. Cameron wasn't alive. Oh, wow. So Tyson was your average Florida kid. He enjoyed being outside, hanging out with his friends. At nighttime, he would sit and watch his favorite television shows. But in August of 1996, Cameron was alive at this point. Let's go. There we go. I was waiting. In August of 96, Tyson was a bit stressed out. Oh, yeah. Me too. I'm stressed. Yeah. So basically, summer vacation was coming to an end. And in a few short weeks, Tyson was going to be a sixth grader. Wow. Oh, hell okay. No. No. That's stressful, right? Sixth grader yeah. is the worst because well, I remember taking a tour. Let me interject here. Go ahead. Go ahead. You're going to do it anyways. Fifth, <laughs> fifth grade, we take a tour of middle school, right? right? Yeah. Uh, in the hallway, an eighth grader goes, I'm going to beat y'all up. What? And my first no, thought was, I remember that. My first thought was, you're not going to be here. <laughs> Right? No. they're going to ninth grade. Yeah, because he's smarter than No, no he got held back. He I have there. a similar story. Um, and we did a tour of I don't know school. if it's mandatory. Like, one kid has to go, I'm going to beat y'all up. The eighth graders bullied so. us, too. I, was, I did the, the tour, tour of right? middle school. They tell them to we, scare them straight. We were going into a, the gym <laughs> yeah. where the lockers are at. Yep. And two eighth grade girls were like, boys, don't, you're not going to like what you see in there. Jeez, what? what? And I was like 11. And I was What's like, what is mean? happening? I don't know. But this is, why, in, this is why this okay. is why Tyson's upset. Yeah, okay, I get he's it. Scared. He's scared. He's the first a fifth time grader. You go, to, go to school and have to change classes. Too. Yeah, yeah, middle school. And he has a tough name, yeah. Tyson. Tyson. Well, plus he loved his current school. He'd been there since kindergarten, so he knew all of his friends. Nah. And now going into sixth grade, that means not only switching schools, um, yeah. but making new friends. Yep. Yep. Um, but it's basically, hard. summer came to an end, 
And on Thursday, August 15th, 1996, Tyson Stowe attended his first day at Howard Middle School in Orlando. Okay. Oh my gosh. So chicken boy because yep. Tyson. Tyson. I get well, it. yeah. And if you want a picture in your head of Howard Middle School, just imagine any middle school you've seen on TV. Okay. That, I've seen like a thousand of them. They're all look different. Kind of like Saved by the Bell. But you see them on TV and you're like, that's not what my middle school looks exactly. like. Exactly. But gotcha. this is what Howard looks like. Fancy. Oh. It's one of those big fancy high, yeah, middle schools. Cool. Um, so basically, um, sixth grade, it, it's really scary. It and is. this kid, uh, it's way more than just like basically junior high is bigger than any elementary school. Like, yeah. So like it's a massive amount of students. Like Cameron said, you got like you switch classes, so you've got five teachers instead yeah. of one. Yeah, uh, it's seven. just stressful. I had I had seven seven. Classes, but yeah. luckily for Tyson, <laughs> on his first day at Howard Middle, he met someone who would become his new best friend. Let's go. That's how it's supposed to work. He met a kid named Matthew, and Matthew and Tyson enjoyed all the same things. The I'm same video to connect games. It here. The same video games, the same bands, okay. same television shows. Okay, um, They were destined to be besties, just like the three of us. Not, oh, oh right. my gosh. You know what I mean? Who yeah. knew? I know. But more importantly, while Tyson was kind of the shy kid, Matthew yeah. was the adventurous one, right? Okay. He was always up to like get into trouble and try new things. Yeah. Mischievous. And that made middle school easier for someone who was shy like Tyson. Having a yeah. friend like that who's confident. Kind of pushes it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was kind of a big deal. Loud mouth. Well, one day uh, during homeroom announcements, the sixth graders were handed a permission slip for their start of the year field trip. Oh, okay. Okay. This is a tradition at so Howard this Middle. Was after they watch Channel One? They watch Channel One News. They get the announcements. <laughs> okay. Permission slip Lisa slid Lane. across the desk. Nice. And they both turn it over to kind of see where it was they were going. And this year, the field trip was to none other than Nickelodeon Studios. No. Oh, let's go. That's what I'm talking That's a about. That's great field this trip. This made. Sixth grade worth it. I know. So we actually covered this place back in episode 50 of our show. So if you aren't aware, Nickelodeon Studios used to be in Central Florida. And that, it was like a theme park, but that's where they shot some really dope shows for the network Nickelodeon. Yeah. yeah. They had a oh, fountain yeah. that would shoot out green slime. Green slime. They had they shot the show Legends of the Hidden Temple there. Oh, Gullah Gullah Island was shot there. Walt Man. and Crazy Kids. But most importantly, to Tyson and Matthew, this is where they shot their favorite show, Family Double Dare. That's, That's what good. I'm talking That's about. So good. Right? So these boys are looking at their permission slips, and they're like, holy cow, they this is where we get to go. Yeah. This, is, this is amazing. This is heaven for us. So the weeks passed, and before he knew it, Tyson and his best friend Matthew were sitting in their school bus pulling up to Nickelodeon Studios. Unreal. Now, because this was a field trip, these guys were getting kind of the behind the scenes treatment. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. like like Do Josh Josh mentioned like the slime fountain. These that's what you would see if you're a normal guest. Yeah. You see the slime fountain. These guys were seeing like how the slime was made, how it was pumped into the fountain. Wow. Like they're seeing everything behind the scenes, all the secret stuff. Yeah. You know what? Let that's me interject what I here. Go ahead. The the one thing that I hated about field trips, yeah. Arriving and seeing other school buses. Oh, oh yeah. so this is unique to Howard Middle. What? So it's not even applicable what you're saying. Oh. So they're the only ones there. Don't I still day. feel it's a little applicable because I'm part of the story. It could be. It could be. So they arrive at this and they're getting all the behind the scenes stuff. Yep. But then they get even more good news. Okay. Right. After they're done with lunch, uh -huh. they're told that three shows are filming that day. Get out of here. And the students could choose one of the shows to sit in on the production <laughs> and meet the host. Uh, they get what? to choose which one? The students what get is to happening? pick. So here are the three shows that were filming that day. They were filming Keenan and Kel. Okay. Mm. Clarissa Bob, explains good. it all. Uh, oh my gosh. And Family oh, Double Dare. Let's go. What? Okay. How are they filming Keenan and Kel not all that? Because they were kind of like... They were close. But So for Tyson and Matthew, this was a no-brainer. They decided to sit on the filming of Family Double Dare. Absolutely. That's, that's their favorite show. That's where they yeah. want to be. Yeah. So here they are, 11 years old. They're watching their favorite show of all time being taped. Yeah. They're watching two families battle it out. Now, and if you've seen the show, you'll get this. But these families are running through the slime nose. Oh. The monkey bars over the ball pits. They're dodging whipped cream pies. Oh, yeah. No, this is the show was like an obstacle course of weird things. Mm -hmm, okay. True. It was a lot of fun. Uh, and if you haven't seen it, you should definitely Google it and watch it. Um, but they're watching all of this happen in real time. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the taping, the host of Family Double Dare, freaking Mark Summers, no way. comes over to their section of students. He introduces himself and he says, hey, do you guys want me to sign anything for you? Yes, Can I absolutely. sign some autographs? Yeah. So that's what they said. They're like, sign everything. This what, does, what happens now when a full class of kids passes out? Like From just they, pure just stardom. Yeah. <laughs> this guy is as famous as Lady Gaga. Oh, and easily. now he's signing all their stuff. Yeah. He's signing their trapper keepers. 
Um, he's signing these. their light up case with sneakers. Oh yeah, yep. He's yep. signing all the stuff. You to sign a, my school shirt, buddy. We're done. Yeah, we're done. To a middle schooler, Nickelodeon Studios is the coolest place on the planet. Yep. And Tyson and Matthew are experiencing their hero, Mark Summer, standing right in front of them, and they have this revelation. Mm-hmm. Okay? okay, they're having mm-hmm. a good time. This is all happening, mm-hmm. almost like a telepathic connection. We're going to come back here. What? And we're going to hide out. And when no. the park closes, we're going to spend the night at Nickelodeon Studios. No uh, way. Fun, the fun doesn't the, the fun doesn't continue through but the But they're night. 11 years old. <laughs> okay. They're, they're 11 like, they years old. They're making so, some cool shows in the middle I, of the night. Yeah, so in their so. mind they're like this is we're going to hang out here. Like yeah. we're going to stay at a theme park overnight. Okay. They kind of ha- come to this conclusion as what they're going to do. Now keep in mind this is illegal just in case you're wanting to do this at home. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're not allowed to do that. I think sleeping somewhere you're not supposed to sleep. Is That's kind illegal. Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and we've always said that illegal. here on the show. Uh, both these kids are smart enough to know that they couldn't do that on the field trip. Mhm. There's a head idea. count. Teachers would know they were missing. Yep. Plus you need like survival snacks and blankets and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. But Tyson and Matthew they were determined to do this, so they put a plan in motion. And the first things first, they were going to need to buy tickets for their return trip. Okay. But okay, you're, so already it's, well, an, it's oh, an expensive good. illegal maneuver. Yeah. yeah. They're 11, and there's no income coming yeah, That's in. the thing, yep. No so income. part one of their plan was on how they could make money, and they both decided they were going to skip lunch every day and save their lunch money. Okay. okay. Um, I was expecting them to go straight for more crime. I thought it would be a crime related also. Yeah. They didn't. They were good That's kids. Good. So they skipped lunch. They we're fasted and prayed, only. kept the money. Yeah. Um, Tyson found an older couple in their neighborhood who what? needed their lawn mowed. So they're really good kids. Yeah, they're, they're good really kids. good kids. They they decided to earn money the old fashioned way, okay. chores, skipping lunch. You yeah. know, the normal this things. whole time they're not like this is a bad idea probably to go spend the night there. Not no, at eleven. No, not at eleven. So between the two of them, they needed seventy dollars. Each ticket's thirty five. Okay. Um, and it took them over a month wow. to raise this money. It takes me like six months to get that money. <laughs> I know. <laughs> They waited patiently, um, and basically, on a Thursday afternoon, Tyson and Matthew, um, they took the city of Orlando public transit all the way to the studios with their $70, yep. and they purchased two tickets. Wow. Okay. So their plan was almost complete. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can't hash a plan like this during the week, and so they waited to the following Saturday, and then they pulled a move that bad kids know all too well. Mm. So if you're listening to oh, this yeah. and you recognize this move, this means you were a one. bad kid growing up. Bad, okay, bad. let's hear. Tyson told his parents yep. he was spending How? the night with Matthew. Classic. Yeah. And Matthew told his parents he was spending the night with Tyson. Yeah. That's a bad kid move. That is a bad kid. That move. means you're a naughty kid. Yep. So that Saturday, they left for each other's houses. Wink, you wink. know that they had to ask a bad kid, like, how do we do this? How do we, how do we sneak out of the house? Yeah, yeah. these kids didn't we're have good, it in their we're repertoire. Good kids. Uh, basically, they, you know, they, told their, they lied to their parents, um, and then they went to their ultimate destination. And so they get there, and as Tyson mm-hmm. walked through the studio gate with his best friend, yep. he, it's like he couldn't believe his luck. This was actually happening. Yeah. I'm and alone. I think when you when you raise the money and you actually get there and your parents are fooled, your confidence is boosted. You're like, I think so. We might actually mm-hmm. do this, right? I mean, yeah. even though staying the night at the park's the hardest part, yeah. For the kids, they're like, well, we're halfway there. And theme parks don't have a head count. Right. That is true. And they're not on a field trip this time. And they're not on a field trip cam. Well, yeah, each boy <laughs> had packed uh, a backpack with the essentials. Okay. Oh, yeah. So one blanket, one tiny pillow, okay. uh, a pack of potato chips. And a few folded peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Okay. Yeah, hey, man. That's, okay. That's like the classic good boy snack. You Survival. Know it's, you know it's great yeah. jelly. These boys are ready to... Oh, these are, these are plain Jane boys. Yeah. And probably like the puffy Cheetos chips. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, so basically, they realized, first things first, we got to figure out where we're going to hide. Like, oh, how, yeah. like where are we going to stay? I, I should can, have fun, some I'll, fun first. I'll, to tell get away where with this. I, I'll tell you where I'm hiding. Where would you hide at? I'm getting a drink. I'm getting a straw, right? Yeah. I'm going okay. to the, I'm going to the slime pool. <gasps> I'm laying under the water. I'm sticking the straw out of the water. That's brilliant, Thank dude. You. You're gonna lay in slime. I'm laying slime for then. After 12 hours, you just get up, <laughs> <laughs> and then you're good to go. So they looked all over the place. They scoped yeah. out the bathrooms, which is an obvious preteen spot. Like, oh, yeah, I'll stand on the toilet and hide, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But they realized there, they were though. too busy. Yeah. They checked out the restaurants. They realized they couldn't hide under a table. That wasn't going to work. Nope. And so the day goes on, and the boys can't even enjoy themselves because they're stressing out so bad about where they're going to hide right. and come out when the park closes. Yeah. So they decide... For the to, real fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so they decide to clear their heads and do something fun. They go back to sit in another taping of Family Double Day. There we go. That's what I'm talking yeah. about. Enjoy themselves while they're there and yeah. while they're sitting in the audience watching this magic unfold all over again 
it hits them, we're going to hide in here. Oh. Okay. I thought he was going to say, Mark Summers comes out and he's like, can I autograph anything? And he's like, what are you two boys doing here? Well, you know, he was like, you guys want to hunt somewhere to hide? <laughs> No, so they're going to hide in the family double deer area. So kind of to paint a picture, this studio that that, that show was taped in is massive. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there's huge sound curtains hanging from every wall. There's tiny crawl spaces beneath every kind of stadium seat. Yeah. And so if Tyson and Matthew were going to stay in the park after hours, this was where it was going to happen. Yeah, and it so, makes sense. And when yeah. they, when they kind of made would, yeah. this revelation, it was 6.30 in the afternoon. The park was closing in an hour. And so the two immediately start hashing out their plan. Okay. They were going to leave their seats and go behind the stadium seating and stand behind the sound curtains, Mm -hmm. like next to the wall. And when the audience cleared, they would just climb up the backside of the bleachers into the crawl spaces and wait for everybody to leave. That was their plan. So they're together. They stay together. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's better than sitting in slime for... Well, we, don't know, we don't know the outcome. Well, here's the thing. Uh, basically, when the audience cleared, yeah. um, they did that, and it worked like a charm. Oh, okay. To a point. Mark then Summers then come out, there better not be any children under the bleachers. Uh, not pissed. again. <laughs> no, he didn't. The two boys, had they only had to hide behind the sound curtain for about five minutes what? before they were able to race over to the seating and climb up and hide under the bleachers. Yeah. Security was real bad in the 90s. Well, I was going to say, what made yeah. it easy was the staff, was they were so focused after the taping on like kind of being tour Cleaning guides. The They're in tour guide mode. Too. Walking everybody out yeah. of the studio, giving them kind of the tour of the area. How do you exit yeah. the park because it's closing? There um, we go. But meanwhile, 30 feet away, 20 feet up in the air, two 11-year-olds <laughs> are safely hiding out <laughs> okay. completely unseen. And so an hour goes by and the yep. boys are just vibing. They're straight chilling, yeah. planning out their entire night. Feet are going numb. Yeah, now they're super confident. Yeah. Tyson's going on about how the host Mark Summers probably has an office nearby. Oh where, my gosh, where he you, works at night, and you they're know planning he probably on does though. They're planning on meeting their hero. This is how their kids' minds work, you yeah. know. Yep. And so, basically, they're planning all of this out, and before they know it, the lights go out, the doors shut. Oh, and Tyson and Matthew are staying the night at Nickelodeon Studios. Jeez. Oh my god! Now they're locked in. That was too easy. Well, here's yeah. So so here so here's what happens. It sounds like a horror movie, actually. At around 10 p.m. The okay. boys get brave enough to come down out of their hiding spot and kind of investigate their surroundings. Yeah. How many peanut butter and jelly sandwiches do they have left? I don't, I don't know. No. I don't know. I but would probably been out in like the first hour. You would have. Yeah. <laughs> Before the park even closed. <laughs> he's, yeah. a, he's a nervous eater. I'm eating my snacks. It's true. Well, the family doubled their obstacle course was kind of lit only by emergency lights and exit signs. Oh, did they do it? But it was enough light. <laughs> For them to instantly start running the course. Oh, my God. Okay, That's so amazing. they're going through the slime. They're playing in the giant pizza, yeah. swimming in the ball pit, uh-huh. uh, you know, basically taking a break inside the giant head. Um, <laughs> they, they're literally living the time of their lives, yep. uh, every kid's dream. But about three hours into this, okay. Matthew lets Tyson know, hey, I got to go to the bathroom, man. Oh, good. So I'll be right back. That. And he's like, I already did in the ball pit. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the slime. Uh, he comes back a few minutes later and he's like, hey, I can't find one. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Tyson's Don't like, you dare. no biggie, man. Like, let's sneak out of this building and yep. we'll go to the public restrooms. And that's when they realized that they had a problem because Nickelodeon Studios didn't have the massive security team in the 90s. Yeah. They were forced to lock every filming location individually. Oh, why wouldn't you? So that the guards could focus on the main gates, which meant Tyson and Matthew were locked inside the family double dare with no bathrooms. Paradise. <laughs> You yeah, would, you would think so. Yeah, so both boys held out as long as they could. Well, before you got to find Mark Summers' office. Eventually, yeah. giving in. Yeah, Matthew was able to find a secluded corner to go pee pee. Oh, okay. jeez. Okay. But Tyson had to go number two. Uh-oh. No, so you when, can hold that. So when he disappeared to do his business, Matthew stayed pretty far away, kind of wondering <laughs> where on earth Tyson decided to drop number two. What is happening? This, Their show, night this was, show is going downhill. <laughs> Their night was turning into a disaster. Okay, <laughs> yeah. and to make matters worse. It was only one in the morning, which meant they had another eight hours before they could make their escape. And no more snacks. No more snacks. They've already gone potty somewhere. Uh, So both boys eventually gave up trying to stay awake. They fall asleep on the bleachers and neither knew how long they had been asleep when they heard the front door open and they were greeted by a cleaning crew and two security guards. Holy crap. So Tyson and Matthew... They had their hands zip tied together in what? front of them. What? Uh, as Securia radioed for local law enforcement. Oh Here's my the thing: gosh. When, you, when you have two 11 year olds, and yeah. they had slept all night long, 
by the way. Like the, the cleaning crew's coming in at the start of the <laughs> day. Uh, so when you have no two 11 year olds. No level of excitement could keep these kids awake. No. no. Uh, nothing. Uh, when you have two 11 year olds who have stayed overnight on your property, the last thing you can do is escort them out the front gates crying. That's probably true. When new guests are coming in. So they were taken to the Wait, back what's gate going of the on property. Here at night? <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> what are y'all doing? They were taken to the back gate of the property yeah. where the employee entrance is. Whoa. And so as Tyson and Matthew are being escorted into the back lot to wait on the police and their parents to arrive, the icing was put on their proverbial humiliating cake. Mm -hmm. Tell us. The two boys are walking and sobbing, and through their tears, the legendary host Mark no, Summers get is coming here. into work for the day. Oh, my gosh. Uh, and his suit jacket and, and tie. seeing them sitting there. So Tyson and Matthew were questioned by the police, uh, where they both confessed that they had hatched their plan during a field trip. And as a result... Nickelodeon Studios never offered behind-the-scenes no. tours to the student groups ever again. They ruined it for everybody? Also, Howard Middle School hasn't done their start-of-the-year sixth-grade field trip since 1996. What? Oh, my gosh. Uh, both boys were grounded, um, but Man. one great mystery was left unsolved. Oh my Tyler gosh. Stowe, the topic of our story, and the Florida man who submitted the story, oh, what? has granted our podcast the exclusive answer to that mystery, and that is God he bless. indeed pooped in the ball pit no no <laughs> yeah. jesus so if you're listening there's a lesson this to be learned worst. here never stay overnight in your favorite theme park wow you know if you're a family you think that's fake duty i oh, know yeah. yeah you but, think what kind of sicko would well, put it looks duty? so real and here's the thing syrup. they're 11 years old so Whoa. you want to think about it an 11 year old is such a little baby yeah uh you know oh, you're saying the turd was a baby turd well i'm <laughs> saying that there's not much you can do i'm gonna hand them over to oh. their parents and okay. be like yeah, hey, keep keep better eye on your kids. Exactly. I thought you were saying, depending on the boy, the size no, of the no, eleven. Okay, oh. let's not even. I just I I want to <laughs> say thank you to everyone who sends in these stories to us. They're really uh, good. We appreciate uh, all of the Florida Man stories, especially um, stuff like this. We yeah. love Nickelodeon Studios. Absolutely, it doesn't exist anymore, um, but it's part of our nostalgia yeah. um, as kids who grew up in Florida. So we want to say to Tyson and Matthew, you guys live the dream. Yeah, um, but even also if, shame on you. Yeah, if you uh, you couldn't see also, it through why properly. Why didn't you invite us? Yeah, I was alive. I was alive. Cameron would have been six. Five. Josh and I would have been around 13. the same age. Yeah, teenagers. Yeah. We could have hung out, bro. We we would have told you not to go potty in the building. Yeah, you could have a five year old and two 13 year olds hanging out. <laughs> that would have been a lot of fun. I can tell you who's getting left out. What a gang. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in real life. Hey, we love you guys. Thank you Aww, for listening so much. Uh, com is where we have a lot of cool stuff. Oh, yeah. We now have t-shirts for sale. Check them out. Um, uh, Famofum.com. You go to Branded Merch. Uh, it's a limited edition t-shirt. Um, they will be gone soon, so grab those while you can. Uh, social media, Famofum Podcasts. Yep. We want to hang out with you guys because we love you. Please. So we appreciate much. you, and we'll see you next week. See you. See you.